We are in Chikmagaluru, the land of coffee. The coffee that is being roasted has changed color. Have a smell also, sir. The coffee has just finished roasting. So we brew and uh, cup different varieties of coffees here. That's our uh, pineapple fermented coffee. So this is a coffee to me that feels fruity. Yes, okay. right even induced floral notes. Okay. Like if you take up civet coffee, that's more of a caramel and a milk chocolate note. I think you want your coffee to hit you differently depending on what time of the day. Coffee blossom tea. Coffee blossom flowers. So we sun dry them. Okay. And then we make tea out of it. Cranberry iced coffee. So what blend is this? Mm. Should come back for another one, sir. Hi folks, this is Kripal Amana Gourmet on the road and you're watching Food Lovers TV. I hope you're doing well, I hope you're staying safe and strong. We are in Chikmagluru, the land of coffee and people here love their coffee. So it follows that if you are in Chikmagluru, you have to experience the coffee tradition here too. Namaskara. We're in the world of coffee. Yes, sir. What's your name? My name is Chandan, sir. I'm the manager of. What's the world of coffee all about? This is the only experience cafe we have in Chikmagalur. Huh. We have specialty of filter coffees and we have the specialty coffees. What is this? Sir, this is the roasting machine. Oh, there's some coffee being roasted in that. Yes. Sir. So, what bean is this? Robusta. Robusta? Yes. Where do all these coffees come from? From our own estate, sir. And what is your estate called? Lalita Agri Estate, 1952 Coffee. 1952 Coffee. Yeah. So people can come here and experience coffee. Yes. Interactive wall, sir. What ah. we have made. So what's an interactive wall? If you place your palm, you'll get the story how coffee was discovered. In the 17th century, how coffee came to India means the Saint Baba Budan has smuggled seven magical seeds in his beard. And via going Mecca, he planted those seven seeds in the Chandragiri Hills. And that, that is, is now that called as a Baba Budan Giri Hills. And that is also another reason why you should, why coffee is so famous here in Chikmagalur. Yes, sir. And the coffee harvesting time is in the month of November to Feb, what we do the coffee harvesting time. Okay. Only in a year, only four months, we'll do the harvesting time. Uh. The remaining time, we'll send it to a pulping and drying process, the next process. Then it will be a roasting process. Then after roasting, it will be packing and grinding, then it will be distributed all over the world. And that I think is the cycle of how cycle coffee of. reaches the consumer from the planter to the operator, the roaster. You can pump here, you can uh, smell the... This is the coffee blossom. This is now in the March time the coffee blossom will happen. Mm. Then it will be the green bean. You get a little bit of aroma. And this is the roasted bean. What we after roasting, you'll get the smell. Well, here I can smell some coffee, but I think the blossoms, perhaps they've lost some of the vigor. You know, they've tried to replicate the coffee blossom aroma here. I think use some synthetic sort of fragrance yes. here. But uh, it doesn't come close to the actual blossoms that you will smell when a coffee estate is in bloom. In fact, it's a magical sight. If you ever have an opportunity to visit a coffee estate when it's in bloom, you must do it. It's a sea of white. The sight is magical and the aroma that penetrates through the air is absolutely bewitching. These are all your coffees that you have here. Yes sir. And we have flavored coffees. We have pineapple fermented. We have tender coconut. We have yellow honey. We have black honey. Yeast fermented. And the world's most expensive coffee called as civet coffee. With that, this is the civet poop. Huh. These are from estates in Chikmagalur? Yes, sir. You can smell here, sir. After the powder, mm. you'll get the smell here. The aroma of coffee is quite intoxicating. So, of course, this is coffee, the coffee bean that goes through the digestive tract of the civet cat. It is then foraged, collected, and of course, cleaned, and then they roast it. Yes. And uh, it goes into these packs.
Well, uh, whilst we were exploring the world of coffee, the coffee that is being roasted here has changed color. Have a smell also, sir. Ah. And you can see the way how it's roasting and all you can directly see, directly mm. smell. So how much more time before it drops? Another 40 seconds. Sir. People can come here and order for their coffee? Yes, sir. In a blend of their choice or in a roast of their choice? That also, sir. How, how they need, they need Robusta, they need Arabica, how the grind size they need. Okay. How, how they need, everything will make it here only and we'll provide here. Alright, and the coffee has just finished roasting and will now cool down here. Yeah, it will cool here. Namaskara. Namaskara. What's your name? Dimple. Dimple. So you are part of the owning family of... Yes. Basically, we are giving you the ultimate coffee experience okay. with respect to filter coffee as uh, well as specialty coffee here. Alright. And also, we give you a hands-on coffee experience. Okay. So, 1952, we are an estate to cup firm. Okay. So, we show them around our coffee plantation, okay. uh, the harvesting, the processing okay. and then uh, hands-on roasting experience. All right. And they also get to cup different varieties of coffees. At the estate? At the estate as well as in the world of coffee. All right. We have a brew bar here, experience All brew right. bar. So, we basically have a coffee brew bar. Okay. The snacks section. Ah, okay. Wonderful. I thought it was just a shop outside. <laughs> no. So we brew and uh, cup different varieties of coffees here. Okay. So we start with our uh, famous blend, that's our uh, pineapple fermented coffee. Basically these are drip bags. Okay. So all you have to do is just pour hot water to that. Uh. And uh, these are basically made uh, with the real pineapple, pineapples. So how do you get pineapple into coffee? Now you know I am a purist, I love my coffee, but tell me about pineapple and coffee. So this is basically a specialty coffee here. Okay. Uh, the process is like we pick the red, uh, red fr cherry fruits. Okay. And, th and then we wash them and we infuse it with real pineapples. And then we ferment it for about two to three days. Uh. And then the coffee will again absorb all the flavor notes and tasting notes of pineapple. So it's not it's not a pineapple essence or something no, like that? No, no artificial. Ah, so this comes to the Mulayangiri region. You can actually smell it. And this is a pineapple fermented? Yes, coffee. Mm. So of course the coffee is dominant, but somewhere in there, there's a slight... Fruity notes. Slight fruity acidity yes. of pineapple that you can smell in somewhere. I don't know what it tastes like though. I uh, will brew it for you, sir. Yeah. Yellow honey fermented, black honey fermented. This is civet. Oh. So this is exclusively sold in Chikmangalur in our uh, cafe, World of Coffee. So these are what you call your specialty coffees? Yes, specialty coffees. Are these pulp sun-dried coffees or? Yes, yeah, it's a so we also induce uh, wild honey in them. When you yes. dry it, so, you dry it with the pulp. pulp. Yeah. So a coffee bean has the, the mucilage around it, yes. right? So you remove only part of it. For the honey, black okay. honey and yellow honey. But for the pineapple? We also remove for them. So the remaining mucilage that you have, that holds on to the yes. character of the food, whatever the yes. natural ingredient trying to integrate into yes. the coffee. Well, that's interesting. It sounds a mouthful, but... You know, as they say, the proof of the pudding always, or in this case, the coffee is in the tasting or the sipping. I think that's what we should do next. And well, to go with your coffee, I think you also have a bunch of things here. Huh? There's a coffee panna cotta that looks very interesting. A tres leches, a banofi pie, and all this is done here? Yes, in-house. Oh, okay. Wonderful. But I think I want to sip on some coffee. It's that time of the evening when you feel you need some coffee to rekindle your spirits. Yeah? What are we doing first? First, we'll try with the pineapple fermented. Okay. Thank you. So this is a coffee to me that feels fruity. Yes. I mean, I'm not really, am I tasting a pineapple juice? No, I'm not, right? No, no, no. It works on the character of the coffee and alters it slightly, yes. right? And that's what it does. So yes. because it's not an artificial essence or whatever which will uh, completely overwhelm the coffee flavors. Yes. I think what I'm tasting is a little fruitiness. Yes. 
more like a pineapple taste, pineapple like. Mm, that's a tough one. <laughs> uh, so, what is the idea behind these fruit infusions? What are you trying to do here? Just to give some variety or? So, it's not just fruity, we try to even induce floral notes. Uh -huh. Like if you take up civet coffee, that's more of a caramel and a milk chocolate note. Ah. Yes. And we also brew coffee blossom uh, tea. So, out of the coffee flowers, uh, we hand pick them, sun dry and then brew tea out of it. Mm. So, that is also a speciality. It's a very light, very sippable yes. sort of a coffee, right? And I think also with coffee, I think you want your coffee to hit you differently depending on what time of the day. Early in the morning when you're just about to get your day started, you want a coffee that gives you that punch and says, wake up. Yes. Right? Yeah. But as the day progresses, perhaps as you, uh, you know, during the evening and as you are preparing more to unwind, I think a coffee like this, which is lighter, perhaps doesn't keep you up <laughs> in the night. I think something like that works. Is that how it yes, works as well? Definitely, yeah. It is obviously this coffee that you have to forage for on the ground. Yes, uh, so basically we have tie-ups with uh, estates in Chikmangalur. Okay. So we basically collect from them. We again, we the process is washing, polish and roasting it. Ah, uh, wonderful. So this is a civet coffee. Yeah. Mm. You know, to me this coffee feels a little more acidic, a little more caramel in terms yes. of its flavour note. True. That's what it yes. feels as opposed to let's say something like the pineapple, pineapple infused ones. coffee. This is also a coffee that to me, for want of a better word, feels much lighter, feels very tea-like. So this is the kind of coffee that I would uh, envision uh, sipping on on a summer afternoon. Right. Very, smooth. very smooth, very easy going. And of course, uh, you got to keep in mind that this is also the bean that has been through the digestive tract of the civet cat. True. Sounds a bit uh, over the top, but then of course they clean it well and yes. then they roast, and roast it. So very sippable coffee. I think on that note, we should probably Try sip on some brew. cold brew. Yes. So basically, these are coffee grounds steeped in ice cold water for a minimum of uh, eight to twelve hours. Oh, okay. In this, I can feel a little more of the uh, the weight of the coffee as well. It's rich body. Yeah, coffee. it's sort of coffee that uh, fills your. Uh, it's mouthful. Yeah. It certainly has a very rich mouthfeel, but it takes you a moment or two to get to that because initially after I've sipped on these hot coffees, the ice is a little numbing and once you get past that aspect of the ice, then you begin to realize the fact that the coffee is certainly one that fills your mouth. Huh? That's interesting. So that's an actual old hand roaster. Hand roaster. I'll give you our uh, favorite cranberry coffee. Cranberry Iced. coffee. Yes. Only on the condition that after that, I want to taste half a cup of a traditional South Indian <laughs> filter coffee. Definitely, definitely. All right. Coffee blossom tea. What is this? Cranberry iced coffee. Okay, and this is your coffee blossom flowers. So we sun dry them, okay, and then we make tea out of it. Mm. Somewhere there is a faint whisper of a floral note in yes. there. Yes. Hmm? Okay. I think I should have made a beginning with this. <laughs> <laughs> right? Because sometimes what happens is as you progress, I think we progress from the lighter pineapple to the um, civet coffee and then we went to the cold brew. This one, it feels very light, almost doesn't register, barring for that floral note. Lovely. Okay, now we got to taste uh, the cranberry. Iced coffee. Iced coffee. So you've got the coffee that's floating on top. The espresso. The espresso. And then the cranberry at the bottom. Plenty of ice. Mm. It's 
quite an interesting combination. You got the sweetness of the cranberry, and then somewhere in that, that coffee is fighting valiantly, trying to make itself its impression heard, and that registers in its contrasting bitterness, right? Mm. I think what's been very interesting to me here is the fact that you guys are uh, taking consumers on an immersive journey through coffee. Yes. Right. The ultimate coffee experience. The ultimate coffee. I think Dimple has all her taglines <laughs> <laughs> packed down. But I think if you're looking to explore coffee and you want to uh, savor the various nuances of coffee, I think this is a good place to explore when you're here in Chikmagaluru. You've got a promise that you need to. Uh, yeah, fulfill. the authentic filter coffee. Yes. We'll give you a sir. So what blend is this? The 80% coffee, yeah. it's Arabica and uh, Robusta Arabica mix. And Robusta. Okay. 20% is chicory. So I think there's more Arabica in this. Yes. yes. Uh, so 70% is Arabica. Arabica is also a coffee that feels lighter, no? Yes. As opposed to Robusta. Robusta, yeah. it's almost double the caffeine of Arabica. Double the caffeine. Yes. Yeah. So this certainly feels like a coffee that's rather light. Yes. Wonderful. So when did these? Uh, world of coffee come into being? It was around 2019, sir, okay. September. Okay. So we started off during that time, uh, okay. during the COVID times that basically. Really? <laughs> yes. So COVID was around 2021. Huh. So then uh, we initially had only the filter coffees. Then recently we expanded it into a specialty coffee section. Mm. And then came about the coffee tours. So we wanted to basically show people what goes behind their cup of coffee. I think we should also taste something from your uh Dessert. Delicious display that you have out here. The one thing that uh, strikes me, of course, since we are on this coffee journey, is the coffee, coffee panna cotta. Yes? yes. So probably we should taste one of that. Well, after all that coffee, it's only fitting that we close with the dessert. Yes. Are you going to join me? Definitely. So, what's tell me about this dessert? What's this about? This is basically a coffee panna cotta. Okay. Then again, here we have topped it with espresso jellies. Okay. And then uh, complements that is the this one, wild honey honey cool. When I look for a panna cotta, I want to make sure that the panna cotta has a bit of a wobble. So, if the panna cotta has a wobble. That means yes. it's a good panna cotta, right? So, we've got some of the uh, the honeycomb. Let's get some of the espresso. Come back for another one, sir. That I will, but now I'm not <laughs> going to share this with you. <laughs> oh, this is very interesting. So, I think the the panna cotta by itself is light, very creamy. It's yes. got just a gentle kiss of the coffee. Yes. And then, I think the honeycomb makes for a nice textural sort of a break. And then, if you really want to load up on that coffee on that caffeine, well, that's where that espresso jelly. jelly. Yeah. Uh, that's pure espresso jelly, yes. I think. Nothing else, huh? Nothing else. Wonderful. Mm. Definitely a must have. If you love coffee and you love your desserts, especially the panna cotta, definitely taste the coffee panna cotta with the espresso jelly. But mind you, the espresso jelly is going to give you a bit of a buzz. I can already feel it. I've just had a couple of cubes of the espresso jelly. I can feel it. A caffeine kick, huh? Yeah, right here. <laughs> well, this is a coffee house that goes back to 1952. It's as old as that, perhaps two or three generations old. But it's nice to see how they've brought the coffee tradition into the context of today. I've enjoyed tasting some of the brews here, also the traditional filter coffee and the panna cotta. So if you want to explore coffee, its history and origins of course, and also the traditions, but also something slightly hatke, definitely check out the world of coffee here in Chikmagaluru. If you'd like to support the work that we do at Food Lovers TV, 
Do consider joining our membership community on YouTube by hitting the join button below or on the home page. You could pledge a nominal sum and receive special privileges like behind the scenes footage, shoot updates, access to live Q&As and a lot more. You could support us on our Patreon page as well. For more info, check out the links in the description below. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, share and leave a comment below. Happy eating.